Hey, it's Errol, and this is Vocal Defrag. Vocal defragging is an opportunity for you to ask yourself questions and then question the answers. We're all guilty of one thing, asking other people questions about us. Why? Why do we do that? Why do we feel like those outside of our body, a family member, a friend, or somebody you just met, why do we think they know more about us? When the reality is, you've never walked in my shoes. I don't know if you could tell, but I was interrupted there for a second because I heard somebody running behind me. Strangest thing how the great creator didn't put eyeballs behind our heads because we tend to miss a lot of stuff that's going on behind us. I once had a general manager at a radio station tell me, he says, I don't want to put the logo on the front of your shirt. And the reason why I don't want the radio station logo on there is because people with their eyes will only see you for a split second. But yet, if that logo is on the back, they'll follow you and know what radio station you're connected with. Interesting. Also interesting was who I was visited by and with just a couple of seconds ago. A fifth grader who just happened to move into the neighborhood. He said, I'm exploring this forest. I looked at him and I said, what? You're exploring this forest? You actually chose those words, I'm exploring this forest? Because in my own heart, how many times have I said, I'm exploring this forest? I shared with the visitor some of the history of this forest, because I've been in this forest since 1992. I gave him enough space to ask questions, and yet that's what we talked about in the very beginning. Why do we allow ourselves to ask other people questions? And I guess the answer is to learn. But when the questions are about our own decisions and our own path in life, is that the place to go? Why don't we start asking ourselves the questions first? I did tell the little fifth grader that I'm the guy that planted 1,700 of these trees in this forest in 1997. He kind of looked at me. He didn't understand. I get it. I don't understand. But for some reason, back in 1997, I answered a calling. And the calling was, plant the trees, replenish the land, do something. And in this forest, since 1997... I've published seven books by asking questions and questioning answers. Not by sitting around saying, well, what do you think? Should I write another book? Should I do a podcast? Should I get back into terrestrial radio? Well, what do you think? I'm not asking people that question because they haven't walked in my shoes. And I think sometimes you need to ask yourself that question. Why do we depend on other people's opinions and or answers to shape our path. It's raining now in the forest. Maybe you'll hear the raindrops as they hit this microphone. It's a light rain. And you feel like that nature is giving you a bath. You've been muddied up, torn apart, thrown into areas of your life that are dark. But we're going to ask somebody else how to get out of there? Why not ask yourself how to get out of a situation like that? Why are you here? Okay, that's a good answer. But now the question is, what puts you here? How do you plan on either escaping or learning from it? I love it when people say, I didn't make a mistake today. I learned a lesson. Or when they say, we didn't lose the game today. We didn't. What we learned today and what we did today was we found a fault and we're going to correct it. So that's tough right there. Those are seeds to be planted in your forest. You don't have to put 1,700 trees on a lay of land and say, hey, I am the guy. But what you can do is you can plant a thought that was created inside your mind, body, and soul into the idea of another soul. We travel a lot, mentally, physically. The reason why I bring that up is because I'm going to go camping with my 19-year-old granddaughter in the next couple of days. And in my defrag journal, I asked the question, what does a 19-year-old think in 2023 compared to a 19-year-old that thought in 1981? That was me, the year of Ronald Reagan. It was before the Berlin Wall came down. What was I thinking at 19? I know what I was thinking. How am I going to survive? I'm married at 19, starting off on a broadcast career. 
how the hell did I get here? But see, I didn't ask the questions, and I didn't question the answers. Not until everything completely broke down in November of 2017. So when I created defragging, it's really nothing new. It just has a weird name. I'm weird, and I live it every day. I only want to open the door for you to ask the questions and question the answers. This forest, where we planted 1,700 trees, the vision is to invite people to this forest. Today it was a fifth grader, a, a brand new kid on the block, who was very friendly, very courageous, because he really wanted to go up and pet Jazzy. You know pet Jazzy. Jazzy's a protective dog, overprotected. But he asked questions, and I asked him questions back. And you wonder, is that how the universe really works? Because I know who inspired me when I was in the fifth grade. Write about it. Go into a journal and ask yourself the personal questions. Who was the inspirer in your life, the influencer that helped guide your way when you were in the second grade? Mrs. Keefe, Ponderosa Elementary School, Billings, Montana. I'm a writer today because she gave me the opportunity. She says, just write. You don't have to do the math. You don't have to do anything but write. Feed it. And I did. Asking the questions, questioning the answers. Ask yourself, the person in the mirror, not the friend next to you or the sibling next to you. Asking questions doesn't always lead to answers, but it really puts you in a place of exploration. Like this fifth grader today, running through this forest, seeing all these really cool things, especially the deer, the hawks, the squirrels he talked about. He was all over this forest because his imagination wanted to find something new to think about. Now, before I said so long to this kid, I said... Do me a favor, write a story, because I, I've been writing all these years I've been here. And he goes, I love writing. I really do love writing. Ask the questions, question the answers. It's called defragging. I vocal defrag so I can go back and listen to the pitch, volume, and tone, so I can understand the emotion that was sent. I also do my vocal defragging in a journal where I can't hear my voice. It's just words, and then it becomes an interpretation. Vocal defrag. I'm Errol.